Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make signatures using the masterboard technique for your DIY junk journal. Now a little while ago I created this cover with the elastic binding for my 5x7 inserts. I'll put a link to that video. In that video there were lots of questions, people wanted a little bit more information and I have included that in this video. Today I'm going to show you how I made this cover and it's different than the other one and I'll show you at the end of the video how I did the elastic binding. At the end of the video I'm also going to give the measurements for the covers of this art journal, the 6x6 one, as well as the other one. So here are some 6x6 signature pages that I created out of my mixed media pad. Now I've cut the cardboard from the cereal box and I've covered it with plain old copy paper. I have some 11 by 17 so I use that but you could piece the copy paper over the back and I just glued it down with fluid matte medium and I've let it dry. So now, instead of putting scrapbook paper or gel print on it, as you often see people doing, or fabric, I'm going to treat this cover as I would an art journal page. I'm going to do some stenciling. Here, this is one of the newest TCW stencils, Leafy Fans, which I love. I'm putting this in black because I want that contrast, I want that to come through to the end. This stencil is called Art Is, and it's an oldie but a goodie, again from the Crafters Workshop. And I will link the products, the stencils that I use, in the description box below, and you can get those at ninniesnapkins.com or Amazon or TCW Shopify store. There are coupon codes in the description link below. Now I want to add some texture to my cover, so I'm putting on white modeling paste from the Crafters Workshop through this Mermaid Tail stencil, another new one for summer 2022. I like when my covers have texture. And I'm putting this right over some of the stamping or some of the stenciling that I have there. And I'm going to make sure that this completely dries. Now I'm going to colorize this and I have chosen to use light blue permanent and yellow green and I'm mixing them wet and wet right on the cover. Now this cover I said was just copy paper and I didn't gesso it. If I was doing this again I would give it a coat of gesso just because it helps blend the colors a little bit easier. I'm working the paint into the modeling paste that's there and I am adding some white gesso now because it makes the colors blend and you get more variation in tone. Loving the green, blue, watery colors that we've achieved here. Now I'm taking Prussian blue which is a dark almost navy blue and I've put it on the Ranger blending foam and I'm rubbing it on top of the modeling paste and around the edges. This is going to bring out the texture of the modeling paste. I want to see that. And I'm edging the whole cover with that. And I'm going back and adding. Now the inside I've put glued copy paper as well. This time I gessoed it and to make things super fast I am brayering on the paint. I'm using the same colors. Actually I'm using turquoise and the yellow green but it's that same watery mermaid-ish tone. I'm going horizontally and vertically and I go add some white. This is the mermaid's tail in the 12 by 12 size and I want an all over pattern here. I'm not worried if some areas are darker or lighter. In fact, I'm loving that variation that adds a lot of interest to my inside cover. I 
I can see that this stencil will be one that I will use and a lot in the future. Just love how it looks. And I'm edging it again. Just a reminder, if you want the, how I bind the elastic and the measurements, that's at the end of the video. Now, TCW has the stencil butters, Stardust stencil butters, and they have fine glitter in the medium. Oop, got a little paint in there. Get to take that out. So I am going to use the blending foam. I'm going to dip it in there, get a little bit in, and work it into the blending foam, and then very lightly go over that modeling paste. Now, because I put the dark there, that gold is going to show up more. And look at that shine. It's very different. If I was to put gold paint on this, it would give it's a, it's a different effect. This is the first time I'm using this Stardust Butter, but it won't be the last time. You can put it through the stencil as well, just like all the stencil butters, but here's another way to apply it. And I'm just building up the amount of gold and shimmer. I'm letting it dry in between and then just building layers. It's the perfect medium to get those iridescent qualities. On the inside and then the outside, I'm also splattering with my thinned gold paint. And because I splatter a lot, I have it in a, one of these dollar store, dollar tree plastic containers. Remember, the elastic binding will be at the end, and then you can just slip the signature in and away we go. Now these are all white pages and you can put, you can cut anything to that six by six side. Actually it's going to be 12 all the way across, folded. And here's how I did that. I took one of these pages out of my Canson Mixed Media art journal and took off the perforated edge by folding it back and forth so it comes off really easy. But instead of cutting it to the six by six sides, I decided what, what would happen if I just basically did a master board on this before I cut it. I do the work once and that's going to give me two journal pages in this DIY journal as well as a smaller three by six journal page or alternatively, I could turn that into two ATCs. But I'm going to use the background, the master board, for all four. So I have found some leftover um, napkin. That's the napkin right there. And then I'm using one of my favorite collage, collage items, the colored and patterned coffee filters that I make. They collage down so well, well they get the, the colors are always so bright. So the orange there and the blue are those coffee filters. And they don't go completely translucent, but they do kind of get this shinier quality, transparent quality to them. And I decided for all the master boards that I'm doing, I'm going to use whatever is within arm's reach. I have a bucket of collage materials that I take out and do not they just don't make it back into the file system. So today I'm just going to crash that sash. Here's another coffee filter. It's kind of a pinkish reddish color with blue dots on it. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to play up those dots and not rip it up. But before I do that, I'm using this DIY foam stamp and I'll put a link to that video. And I'm doing some stamping here just to get some pattern on there. So when you're doing anything with a master board, a master board is where you do the work once. Basically, it's a background. And then you cut it up and use it for multiple projects. And here I'm just gluing down that coffee filter. And this time I've kept it in the circular type, circular shape. Or 
when you do a mass production like this of all the master boards, you have one brush to clean and you have all your stuff out. So you have one cleanup at the end and it's a good way. Here I'm just using stamps. I'm using stencils that I may not have used before. Here's more collage papers that were in my collage bin. Old gel prints, some of it's on deli paper, some of it's on copy paper. I had covered up some of that stamping and I just wanted to bring those circles out. So I'm just stamping again. I wanted some script on there, so I grabbed my dark room door script stamp and just adding some stamp. Now some of the master boards, I'm really taking it almost to the finished area and some are going to have less. When you have this in your DIY journal, if on a day where you don't have a lot of time, you can just grab it out and it's partially already done. The color scheme is chosen. Here I'm adding some more stamping. with archival ink. I'm using everything that's permanent and that way I don't have to worry. Then we fold them in half. This page measures 12 inches across so half is six and then I'm cutting it six by six with my Tim Holtz tonic cutter. But you know I decide you know what I'm going to do the other side and get it and doing it a fast way I'm going to do some brayering. Brayering is a great way of getting some color on there. Quick and easy, it adds texture, it adds a little bit of pattern. Here I'm using um, Hooker's Green was the dark green, and this one is the neon green. This is Hole Punch. And I'm using the darker green, just to add a little subtle patterning. Now the reason I'm not doing all of them to the nth degree is because each half it will be a different page and I plan to do each half differently and if I leave it opened or if I don't do it all the way to the end till I'm completely done to have a complete background there's more opportunity to make each page unique. I used that mermaid stencil on this one and just added a little pattern. I opted to do very, very little here. And now I'm cutting it six by six. So these are the six by six signatures and the other ones, well, I'll show you what I do with them later. On to the next master board. I had some script type, typed out here. These were my quotes and I had it in a script font. I've ripped that up. Here's another coffee filter and a first layer of a gel print that just had some blue and purple. And I'm just gluing everything down with my fluid matte medium. On each page, I'm trying to do get a variety of different colors because depending on the day, I might want to be yellow or I might want to be blue or pink. And it's nice to have those options available for you in the art journal. You also saw there will be some pages there that are blank. If I have more time, I can start from scratch or I can pull it over and that 12 by six, I can do the master board technique again and make one background for both and then add some variations when I do these pages separately. Now this one, this is a magazine page, but I like the colors here and I grabbed a DIY, um, I think I did this on rice paper. 
I did some stenciling and tea staining on with rice paper. But again, it's something that's been in my stash and today's the day I'm using it up. Instead of working and trying to file, file it back in, the, in its filing folder. So you can use colors from a magazine. This is giving me my color scheme for the page. It's also adding some texture and pattern. And it'll give me the jumping off point for my art journal page. And I'm using one of, another one of my DIY stamps just to add a little more patterning. And I wanted to add some black for contrast. For some reason, that's what was calling to me. This stencil is called Diamond Plate. And I just love the scale of this. This one's going to be another favorite that I'm going to get a lot of use out of because it's just so page neutral. And I am giving it a dry, although you'll see I didn't dry it enough. It's smeared, but yeah, live and let live. And then I'm just adding some gesso and yellow, bright yellow. There, it's smeared. Don't cry over smeared paint. And I'm just mixing it uh, ever so slightly and adding a little bit of red. I was going to put green on there and then all of a sudden I grabbed red. Tried to put gesso through it. That didn't work so I wiped that off. Here I've got extra thick gesso and I'm using a silicone sink liner and just stamping on it. This gives me some texture, like modeling paste, and some pattern. Oh, I just love this background. Ooh, can't wait to use that one. Back to using the brayer for a quick easy. There's light blue, permanent. Some gesso. This one is called Mediterranean Ceiling, another new one from TCW. This is a slimline stencil, but I really love, love, love this pattern. So I'm just doing it all over. This is a great time when you're doing master boards to try out new stencils or new stamps. Put them through their paces and see if you really love them. This is a silicone trivet that I've cut down and I'm just putting black paint on it and using it like a stamp. So there are the four signatures, and that will give me four pages each. That's 16 pages in my art journal. And I decided I'm just going to alternate it with the plain pages. To put into the cover. Now the nice part, because I'm not binding this, I'm not sewing this, I can change the order at any time. The one that's in the very center will, it'll be a full page spread. I like this one. I think this is going to be the one that I want as a full page spread. So I'm going to put it in the middle. All the other master boards will be separate pages. There'll be two pages instead of one 12 by 6. And we're going to slide it into the elastic. And voila. Oh, that came out. I can add more pages or I could take out pages if I see fit. 
stay tuned. I'll be pulling these pages out and creating with them. I've got some ideas already. I hope you'll join me. I also have this. Remember these? I cut out the measure six by three inches. So I can make two ATCs out of this, two and a half by three and a half, or I could make a cover for this size using a cereal box. So I've added another signature and I still have one elastic for, I think I'm gonna put watercolor paper in there. So I have a watercolor six by six to work on. So let's talk about putting the elastic on. The backing here is two inches and I punched a hole in the middle, the one inch mark and half an inch on each side. I used an awl, but you can use a nail. You're just going to have to make sure you do it into a phone book. And then I put one in approximately the middle. That's for the closure. I want to make sure that my 6x6 six six signature fits comfortably in there with a little bit of wiggle room on each side. You can see how much there is on the side. The measurements are coming. Now, this is the one millimeter elastic that I initially bought, and I discovered that this is too thin. This one, I believe, is 1.3. I got it at our fabric store, and this one is 2.5. I couldn't find the two millimeter, and that's what was recommended to me. The 1.3 works, so anything from 1.3 to 2 will work. Here is the 2.5 one, it's a little thick. I made it work on this as well. But you definitely don't want to use the one millimeter. They recommend using four lengths, and that should have been enough to do the binding on the back for the signatures and the closure. But I did not find that to be true. So, Four lengths gives you a little bit of waist. So maybe three and a half lengths would be perfect for the signature part. Now when you cut it so it doesn't fray and it's easier to use, just use a lighter and just let it melt. It melts in and you, it won't fray on you. So let's stitch. We're going up the bottom or the up the middle right and down the middle left side then up the top left and you want to pull that one so it's a little bit past the middle where you punctured that middle hole just like that now you're going to take the other end and you're going to go up the bottom right and you might have to put the all in there to make sure that it's clear so you can easily get it through and down the bottom left now you're going to go up the bottom or the left middle Yes, there will be two cords there, so you might have to make sure the hole is a little bit bigger or just kind of scooch it out. It's not too hard. Then you're going down the middle, right? Now you want to pull this fairly tight. The cover is actually going to bend a bit. 
and you want that so that you have the right tension to hold the signatures in. Then you're going up the top right and now you're going to go left over right and right over left and tie a knot. Here I'm just pulling the tension so that it buckles just that little bit and then I'm just going to tie. And it took me a couple of attempts but because you want to keep that tension there. And tighten it. Now before you cut anything off, you want to make sure you put the signatures in there and test it to make sure that it's tight enough and then, and only then will you cut off the excess. So here I am testing it out. and then I'm just going to cut off the excess. Now we're going to do the closure part. And here's the little leftover piece. I did four lengths and I had leftover, so if you do three and a half, you should be great. I'm just going to fold this over and put it through, and I'm just pulling it through. I'm doing kind of a, a rough fit to see how long I need it. So I haven't cut anything. I'm going to wrap this around to close this and get the right amount of tension. And when I think I have it, I'm just going to cut Cut it from the spool and tie a double knot. And before I cut anything off, I'm just making sure that it still works, that it's going to hold properly with room for the book to, to grow because it is going to get thicker as you do the pages. Now I'm going to pull it really tight cut off the excess yep it all works now you can leave this as it is but I'm using a little bit of painters tape here just cutting a nice clean edge and I'm just going to tape that down to secure it and since the blue color matches I don't even have to paint it if it didn't match or if you cared you could just do a piece of that's a, a matching color out of copy paper and glue that down and now we're ready to put whatever signatures we have in there and you can vary how many pages you put I go between 8 and 12 pages. Once I start using it, I think I'll have a better idea. So here is the other one, and it fits 5 by 7 signatures, which are 18 by 12 centimeters approximately. So from end across there, it's 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters. Up and down, it's 9 inches or 23 centimeters. I've kind of rounded up or down. And the piece from elastic is 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. That gives a space wide enough to fit that 5 by 7 insert or signature. On the 6 by 6 one, 6 by 6 inches, which is 15 by 15 centimeters, from here to here across is 15 and 3 quarters or 40 centimeters. 
top to bottom is seven and a half inches, 19 centimeters, and the opening is six and a half or 17 centimeters. You can follow these measurements, but you can eyeball it and make it whatever size you want. I can't wait to start using my journal. But that will have to wait for another video. I'm going to pull one of these pages and do it. Here are close-ups. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment. Until next time, go get creative.